<coughs> My name is Ignatius Sancho. I was born in 1729 on a slave ship during the Middle Passage going towards the Americas. My mom died when I was young, and my dad killed himself to avoid being a slave. <coughs> I was brought to England by my slave owners when I was only two years old. I was given to nuns and worked as a servant in Greenwich for a powerful family. I was lucky enough to become a free man and open my own grocery shop. From there, I started pursuing the acts of becoming an actor, composer, and writer. I am also the first African to vote in British Parliament in 1774 and 1780. Due to my background and experience firsthand with slavery and oppression, I strongly believe that the slave trade must be abolished immediately because the current slavery goes against the words of the Bible and is inhumane. Although the slave trade is seen as a fundamental part of the English economy, the economy does not need it. England and the rest of Europe should be focusing and investing their efforts towards goods Africa has to offer, rather than investing in the slave trade. Quoting Aloda Ekiano, a commercial intercourse with Africa opens an inexhaustible source of wealth to the manufacturing interests of Great Britain and to all of which the slave trade is an objection. The abolition of slavery is so diabolical will give a most rapid extension of manufacturers which is totally and diametrically opposite to what some interested people assert. Slave trade is standing in the way of what could be a gold mine of goods, industry, enterprise, and mining, in which England would become handsomely rich. Slavery is something that has existed in ancient Western culture in the past, but slavery has become drastically more violent and cruel. The slavery in the past was often voluntary, and the slaves were the slave owner's responsibility. People often chose to be slaves to pay off debt. The slavery that exists now is inhumane, and no one would wish it upon themselves. I once wrote in the letters to my dear friend that all Englanders seem to care about now is money, money, money. They don't care for the well-being of slaves. In fact, many slaves are abused. The Europeans say that they are culturing, seasoning, and integrating them into a higher and well-mannered society. But is it really culturing if all they're doing is beating and starving them? Captain Kimber, who is in our presence today, is known to have whipped a slave girl to death for no reason and to have gotten off without any charges. Not only have there been many cases like this, but when transporting slaves, the merchants pile them in extremely cramped ships that reek of death and disease. This kind of slavery is wrong and unjust. Not only is it unjust to treat people like this, but the Bible concludes that slavery is wrong. Slavery, as stated before, was voluntary and meant to pay off debts, and it should have stayed this way. People may argue that the Bible is not, does not say anything against slavery, but in the Bible, slave traders are compared to lawbreakers and perjurers. First Timoth First Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 says, we also know that the law made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that confirms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me. Slave traders are seen as contradicting the gospel. For the reasons of the economy, slavery no longer being what it was intended, becoming terribly cruel, and the fact that we are going against the word of the Bible, slavery should be abolished. We can't continue to treat Africans inferior than any other race because of the color of their skin. Am I inferior to the white man? I have the right to stand here today because like all of the African slaves, I am human. As Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you, all, for you are all one in Christ Jesus.